Hello YouTube, my name is Scott and this is my weathered deck. This deck has been neglected for years, much longer than I've owned the house. And replacing my deck will cost me thousands of dollars. So I've been looking around trying to find the best solution. Should I stain it? Should I paint it? Is it, is it worth saving? Is, is it possible to bring this deck back to life and fresh without spending thousands of dollars? Well, after all my research, if you haven't already guessed, this video is about Deck Over by Bear. Let me grab the camera and let's review this pamphlet closer. Okay, Deck Over brings new life to wood and concrete. Well, that sounds promising. Let's open it up and have a look. Okay, here we go. Here is all the different stains it comes in. I have chosen two of them and I'll get into details about that in a minute. Let's just flip this over. Okay, how to properly fill nail holes and cracks. Let's see what it says here. Use bare premium deck over coating to conceal nail holes and cracks up to a quarter inch. Use a brush, completely fill the nail holes and cracks to allow to dry. Deep nails and cracks may require additional fillings. Prep and cleaners. Wood prep, okay, that's the one I want. It says for best results, prep and clean with the appropriate bare products for your wood and concrete surfaces. Okay. Opening this back up again, let's just have a quick review of all the colors and stains. So what I've chose for my rails is right here. It's called slate, and then I've chose pewter, is this one right here this is pewter for my actual deck surface this is the slate okay, moving on to the actual products here we are here is the five gallon bucket of deck over deck over brings new life to old wood and concrete conceals splinters and cracks up to six millimeters well my deck definitely has lots of those creates a smooth slip resistant finish Perfect. That sounds exactly what I'm looking for. Let's just review the uh, processes here. It says, must prep before use. Requires two coats. Moving on to preparation. Proper surface preparation is required. Wood surfaces require replacing of rotting or unstable boards and remove loose splinters for failing exterior coating or to remove loose wood fibers use a product such as bare premium number 64 wood and stain finish stripper followed by bare premium all-in-one wood cleaner blah 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 let's see here after using your cleaners rinse thoroughly with a garden hose or pressure washer when rinsing with a pressure washer, no, never use a pressure washer. It says use the broadest spray pattern and keep the nozzle at least 24 inches away from the surface. Allow the area to dry at least 24 hours before coating. Lightly sand to remove remaining wood fibers fuss. And then it goes on to concrete. Well, let's forget about concrete because I don't have any of that. So a few key points to take in mind there. This must be prepped you need to prep this and what we what they recommend to prepping this is right here all-in-one wood cleaner just turning that over okay let's see what it says where to use exterior wood and composite decks siding shakes shingles fence patio furniture vinyl aluminum siding masonry stucco and concrete okay it says removes exterior stains caused by mold mildew algae fungus removes Household stains such as barbecue sauce, ketchup, wine, etc. Naturalizes wood surfaces after stripping. Restores the wood to its natural color. Also removes mill glaze, tanning bleed, bleed and rust stains. Perfect. Uh, let's look at preparation. Preparation, blah, blah, blah. Use goggles, use gloves, use protective clothing. Okay. Nothing else we need to know about that. So I've currently finished half of my deck. 
I've cleaned it, I've prepped it, I've put the deck over down, and it has blown me away. I did not expect it to be this good. Before I get to showing you what that looks like, let's just talk about the preparation for this. So one of the musts with prepping is you need to prep your deck. If you look at my deck, all this algae and fungus and mold and everything else that's on that, that needs to come off. What they recommend is using this all-in-one cleaner and a scrub brush like this and a whole lot of elbow grease. And it really is amazing. I'm going to show you a few shots here of what it looks like after it's been prepped because it comes clean like it says. The next, the next must is do not use a pressure washer. When you use a pressure washer, you are, yes, you're blasting off all the finish and you're saving all the elbow grease, but you are blasting high pressure water deep within your wood. And if it does not have enough time to dry, when you put the deck over on it, you are sealing all that moisture in and you're gonna further cause rot and decay to your wood deck. So you must, I cannot stress this enough, do not use a pressure washer. Use the cleaner, use the elbow grease and do it the right way. They say that after you use the all-in-one wood cleaner, you need to allow at least 24 hours for drying time. Again, this is a must for the same reason, because you want to make sure that all that wood, all that moisture is out of, out of your wooden deck. Okay, the next key point to installing this is you must have at least 24 hours of sunshine after you apply deck over. Now it says that deck over dries within four to six hours. From my experience, this is true. Uh, based on the temperature you have, it will obviously dry faster or slower. However, they say that within 24 hours, you can walk on your deck, but what I found was even moving the paint bucket around it caused scuffs and scrapes so they do say that you need 72 hours before the deck can take foot traffic and be used normal and the key to this is having at least 48 hours of no rain and no heavy traffic after you put your coat down so before you go ahead and install deck over check the weather make sure you've got three or four days of sunshine and go to town what, what Home Depot recommended to me was that I use a roller such as this. So what I found worked best for me was this is what you should use for your final coat. What you want to do is you want to take a brush, a normal brush, preferably not an expensive one or not a brand new one, and you want to use deck over and you want to put as thick a coat as you can. What you want to do is you want to take your brush, you want to load it with paint, you want to fill all the cracks, and then you want to put it really, really thick on the surface. If you look at the surface of my deck, there's several cracks and holes. Anything like this, anything where the nail holes are, all of that, you can cover that up if you put one thick layer down with the brush first. Once that dries, come back and you may have to use a spot filling on the remaining big cracks and holes in the deck. Once you've done that, for your final coat, then use a roller and roll it out. However, keep in mind, like I said, you do not want to use a good brush because this is what they look like after about 20 minutes of use. So get a bunch of, buy the cheapest brushes you can, get a bunch of old brushes and just slather it on the deck as thick as possible. What I'm going to show you next is a part of my deck that has two coats rolled on and then the next part that has one layer with the paint slathered on with a brush. Okay, here we are. Here's the section that's had two layers of brush rolled out. You can see that it looks nice, it's smooth, but look at how big these cracks are. These cracks wouldn't get filled in with 10 coats with a roller. But let's just move down here. Look at the difference. The same board, and this is with one thick layer with the brush. Let me zoom out a little bit more here. Look at the difference. This is a complete side-by-side mock-up. This 
with no brush, two coats rolled out, this with two coats rolled out as well as a brushed on layer. So you absolutely want to brush it out, put it really thick, let it fill all the gaps, come back, do a spot fill, and then for your last coat, roll it out just to give you that nice, clean and smooth finish. Okay, how do I apply the all-in-one wood cleaner? What you need to do is you need to have a spray bottle, such as this one, an old Windex bottle, an old any sort of spray bottle. What you're going to do is you're going to fill this up with 50% water, 50% all-in-one wood cleaner. Okay? Now that our spray bottle is filled up, 50% water, 50% all-in-one wood cleaner, let's start spraying the deck. Bear says that you should leave this sit for five minutes before using the scrub brush. Once you've scrubbed this off fully, then you're supposed to take your hose and you're supposed to hose it off. From my experience, what I found was once I soaked it, the five minutes didn't really matter, that you could pretty well start scrubbing it right away. And sometimes it required more than one coating of the spray. So without further ado, let's get to work. All right, let's do this. Let's get down to work. Okay, instantly we can see a difference and it just takes a whole lot of elbow grease. Alright, so here we are in the middle of painting. I've got my paint bucket, I've got my paint and you want to make sure you get it all in between the boards. With this first coat you want to make sure that it's nice and thick and it looks like you're putting way too much on but it will dry and it will smoothen out and everything will look good when it's done. So pretty straightforward, but if we, we just lather it on there, you do fill all these cracks, all the cracks in there, everything will just kind of go away. And it is quite the, it's definitely not like anything else I've ever painted before. It's really thick, almost like cement. the nail holes, all the cracks, everything will just dry and be gone and you'll be left with this nice smooth finish. So once once this coat dries for 24 hours then I'll come back with a roller and I will roll the final coat on and after that it should be done. Um, once I guess before we roll the final coat on we'll have to go around and just check it and there might be the odd spot that needs some touch up because the crack is still uh, viewable because the paint went, went into the depth of the crack so what you don't want to do.
thanks for watching my video. I hope you guys learned from my experience and don't forget to hit that like button. Leave your comments below. If you have any questions, leave those below and as always, don't forget to subscribe for more great videos.